Hello, welcome to Jay's studio. Um, this video is actually for more for the purpose of talking just a little bit um, while I'm also showing you some first layer goodness uh, on the ER20 here from Airy One. Uh, this print um, it has just started really, it's been going for about half an hour, but it will be well over two days, maybe two and a half days. And it will be a print of the type that you've seen all over the internet. It's the Hogwarts school um uh that uh that's going to be printed in this airy one silk or metal silk rainbow uh pla but um as we're watching the uh, first layer go down here which is is going on really nice as you can see i'm just really really happy with the uh, with the way this first layer is going down and if you saw in my latest video i'm also really happy with the precision in the x-axis especially after the last print Given uh, by the or helped by the fact that uh, we installed this really nice X belt ten or uh, X axis belt tensioner, uh, which has just really seemed to, to to tighten up the movement, especially given the fact that there are uh, that it's that the pulley wheel on this side is also uh, geared or toothed uh, like the one on the left on the motor. I just think that adds itself uh, or lends itself to a bit more precision. Maybe not. Maybe it's all placebo effect. But anyway, everything seems to be working really nicely. This first layer, it's going to be massive. It's taking up almost the entire bed here. It's going down really well. Um, I'm excited about that. Excited to see how this turns out over the next couple of days. And I'll take a couple of, uh, couple of pictures, videos, whatever, as it goes along. Post them up on the Area 1 Facebook site, etc. But the, the real reason for the video is to talk about some changes that I made. If you watched my calibration series, and I'm actually going to put this video into that playlist, uh, I have been working with retraction settings on both the ER20 as well as my ER, my Thinker SE, uh, which is in the same room behind me. But since it's in an enclosure, I, I'll just not try to video it uh, as it's moving along. But I've been working on retraction settings because... Even though in my uh, original video on retraction, I found uh, some settings work, working on various types of retraction towers, uh, retraction calibration prints, still wasn't happy. I, I, things were printing just fine. However, they weren't printing as well, especially with regards to some stringing and some other issues, even with calibrated temperatures for the different PLA types that I've been using. So I decided to run another series of retraction tower prints, and, uh, and we'll see how those play out over the next few days. But for now, for those of you that have been following my retraction settings, on the ER20, I have now uh, decided to run with a retraction distance of 5 millimeters and a retraction speed of 50 millimeters per second. So 5 and 50. Uh, we will see how that plays out, and I'll update uh, I'll update with a video um, once we get closer to the end of this and some other prints on how things seem to be doing. Uh, interestingly, on the Thinker SE, uh, we are at four millimeters, and but still 50 millimeters per second. So uh, the speed seems to be working out about the same for the both. It seems that on the Thinker SE or the larger printer that the distance, uh, the better results I get with about four millimeters of retraction distance. Whereas here on the ER20, Five millimeters and 50 millimeters per second seems to be uh, the sweet spot, at least in this latest round of calibration prints. So I, I suppose the real f message that I have as I close out this particular video is that calibration is kind of a never-ending process. Um, mentioned it several times in the original series, but as you go forward, if you're not happy with a particular aspect of your printing, and you, you want to see what's going on, or at least try to, to make things a little bit better, um, you're gonna have to continue to tweak your variables. And this is not also because of the fact that you might have been wrong in your original, uh, your original calibration prints and interpretation. Uh, actually, that's probably not the case. I would say, and this is a very anecdotal, non-scientific opinion, but backed up by the fact that what we're dealing with is are, are, are machines that have consumable parts. Uh, it's not like you're going to use the same nozzle uh, 
indefinitely. It's not like you're going to use the same uh, set of components indefinitely across the different systems, whether they be the hot end, whether they be the extruder, whether they be the belts, whether they be the wheels, all, all these things are, are consumables. Um, and as things either wear in or break in, or in the case of certain things, and I'm specifically thinking about nozzles, hot end type, type components, you're going to have to replace them fairly frequently. Um, they're going to perform differently throughout their life cycle, and as a result of performing differently, you're going to need to modify your settings. So I'll leave it there. Uh, just don't forget to continue, uh, as you see things change in your prints, to, to, to re-reference the calibration steps uh, and do a few calibration uh, exercises to improve your printer. In this case, trying to improve retraction. Um, I'll be back with some more on this print as we get farther along in it, but I think you'll agree that as far as a first layer going down, this is looking pretty sweet. So, back to see you later. Take care. Happy 3D.